love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. from First United Methodist Church. What about the goodness of God? Is he not so good today? I was getting ready for this sermon, and I was worshiping to that song, and I just felt like God said, why don't you put that at the beginning of your sermon this week so that the folks at home, even though they can't be in corporate worship with us together, 
you can still worship in your living room, in your den, in your kitchen, wherever you may be today, watching our service. I miss you guys. I, I want to be back together worshiping with you. I just want to encourage you that his goodness, just like the song says, is running. It is running after me. He is running after you. You don't have to be living in fear right now. I understand that many of us are concerned. Many of us have fears because of this Chinese Wuhan coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you choose to call it. It has disrupted our world, and none of us want to be infected by that virus. None of us want to be sick. None of us want to see our loved ones infected with that virus. So there is a reason to be concerned, but today I'm going to talk to you about faith versus fear. We've got to have faith, and I know I've got several things over here on the table that we will refer to and we'll look at today, but one of the main things that many people today are concerned with is the TP, that's right, the toilet paper. Do you have plenty of toilet paper in your house? I know I've been to Walmart and other places recently in Food City and the different stores, and it seems like every time I go to that aisle, it is completely empty. And the same thing with the bottled water. I've been down the bottled water aisles recently, and those are gone as well. So I just wanted to have these up here to represent what's going on in our society that many of us can relate to because we have lived it in the last few weeks. Now, speaking of toilet paper, I know some people in Sevier County are hoarding toilet paper. I heard of one person who has 144 rolls of toilet paper stockpiled in their home. I know what you say about that, man. That is strange, isn't it? If you need 144 rolls of toilet paper for a 15-day quarantine, you probably should have been at the doctor before this coronavirus, amen? That's, that's bad. I know, right, a lot of you have been missing my great joke. So I had to give you something. I know Michael back there on the camera, he says, amen, right? So... I know we'll be back together, and you can groan and moan in person, but if you do, if you need 144 rolls of toilet paper, you needed something checked long before this breakout, guys. Just relax. If you see something in the grocery store, buy what you need. Leave something for other folks. Amen. So, Severe from First United Methodist Church, like I said, we miss you. We love you. We look forward to when we can be back together worshiping together again. I was off all the last week uh, before all of this sort of broke loose. I'd taken a vacation. It was my birthday week on the 19th was my birthday. And it was surreal seeing everything that was going on uh, the week before that, the Sunday before I was supposed to preach, but they canceled church for us. Pastor Jeff uh, notified me on the Thursday before that sermon that we were shutting down. The bishop had told us that we needed to practice the social distancing that we need to shut down to keep everyone safe. And we fell under that authority, and that's what we decided to do because we want to keep you safe. We want to keep our families safe as well. So that was strange not to preach that Sunday. Then I was on vacation last Sunday, so Pastor Jeff preached both of those Sundays. And then you are stuck with me today, and I hope that you're there, that if you want to take a good nap, this is a good time for you just to relax, to kick back in the recliner, and hopefully, hopefully you don't, uh, don't snore too loudly. But we, uh, we are in unusual times, and Jeff asked me to come up and to preach this week, and we're going to try to take turns. I'll preach a week, he'll preach a week, until we are back together. I've not seen anything like this in my 49 years. I don't know about you, I've talked to a lot of folks that are older and wiser than me, and they've not seen anything like this virus, this scare, this shutdown of our economy the infections, the death rates, the things that are going on, the financial markets crashing, uh, the hospitals being inundated, people being overwhelmed, having the fear that seems to be gripping our nation, and not only our nation, but our world. So I decided that we would break from our series called Coffee. We'll bring that back in probably in the fall of 2020 to revisit that. We, uh, we were only into week one anyway. So we'll bring that back up. But I thought faith versus fear would be the place to go today. I know you see things going on. You've got a $2 trillion bill that I think just passed in the Senate. This is Thursday as I preach today to you. That is just unbelievable to me. I can't comprehend those numbers. And I don't think anyone before these last few weeks in our nation could have expected a $2 trillion bill. 
there are death cases in the United States. There are fear that because of those deaths. But I want to encourage you a little bit. This morning, I uh, did the numbers right before I came in here to preach. And the U.S. death rate is around 1.5%, give or take. I'm not a huge mathematician, but right now we're staying pretty low. If, and any, any death is too much. But the lower we can keep that rate by the social distancing, staying away from one another, staying home as much as possible, that's going to help our nation to get past this crisis. There's a John Hopkins map online. I encourage you to go to that. That has great information, and it breaks it down for the states, breaks it down for the country, breaks it down for the world, and that is, that is a good information for you if you like to follow what is going on. So faith versus fear. You say, Pastor David, yes, I am scared. I am afraid. How can I build my faith and not dwell in fear? How do I not let that fear take over my mind? And today we're going to be primarily in Psalm 91. I just felt like God laid this upon my heart. I've seen other men of God preaching on this. I think it's been referred to a couple of times by Pastor Jeff. But I thought today, if it's okay, not that you have much of a choice, we're going to dig into Psalm 91, verse 1, through the rest of that chapter. We've got about six points. Now, I'll warn you, I have not preached in three weeks. So I'm ready to go. I'm fired up. This has been burning in my soul all morning. I couldn't wait for Michael to get here to shoot this video. So I'm going to try to condense it, try to keep it as brief as possible. But you have control. You can hit pause, and you can walk away from me. You can, you can stop for a while. You can come back, and you can finish it much later. Once you wake up from your nap, yeah, you can have a cup of coffee, whatever you need to do. So that's sort of neat. And we'll, we'll get through this. We've had a lot of folks watching our sermons and our downloads on Facebook and on our webpage. So let's, let's jump into this today. We're going to give God the glory for everything in spite of what's going on, in spite of the fear. Hopefully this will uplift you and encourage you today in these difficult and uncertain times that we live in. Join me as we dive into the scripture. In the New Living Translation, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 4, will get us started. The Bible says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety, for he is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. And that brings me to our first point today. If you live in close relationship with God, you will have peace in any season of life. As long as you control your emotions, as long as you control your reaction to everything that this old world throws at us but you've got to live in the shelter of God. You've got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're watching us once a week now, or when we come back to church, you have the opportunity to come to church once a week, or maybe on Wednesday nights with us. Those are great things. We're glad that you're interacting with us. We're glad that you're worshiping with us today. But it takes more than that, my friend, to be a Christian and to walk in this kind of peace in turbulent times. We've got to know Abba Father, we've got to be able to jump in Daddy's lap and spend that time in His Word and in prayer and in that personal relationship with Him. And if we do that, yes, even in a pandemic that nearly shuts down our nation, we can have that kind of peace and that kind of freedom in our faith. I've got a little equation here that I'm going to say for you. It's, it's faith plus wisdom and common sense, I'll add that. It is actually greater than fear. If we have faith plus wisdom and common sense, that is greater than fear. Our faith in Jesus Christ, our faith in our personal relationship. Now, I'm not throwing out common sense. We need beans. We need water. We don't need to hoard it, by the way. We need to have enough for ourselves, our families, and hopefully to be able to be the Christians that we should be to help Others, the hand sanitizer, the spray disinfectant, do the practical things, the bleach. Everybody's been looking for masks. I thought about putting this mask on today, but it's just me and Michael. I don't really need it. I think we have plenty of social distancing today. Lysol spray, the toilet paper. And then what do you have faith in? I know we really don't have faith in those things. Those things are necessary in life. 
But do we put our faith in weapons? Do we put our faith in ammunition? Do we have too much food at home that maybe we're not willing to share? We're actually hoarding it. Does that cause us to have faith? If so, that's temporary faith. You don't need a gas mask, hopefully, to go out into this situation. But there are things and tools that we have in life that we can use in a good way, with common sense, but we don't want to put our faith in those things. Back in biblical times, they had the swords. They didn't have the AR-15s. They had swords that they used to protect themselves, to fight their enemies, to do the things that they needed to do. And it was a two-edged, like this, a replica of a Roman short sword a lot of times. And they would use that in battle. They would take that for their protection and whatnot in life. But I encourage you to pick up the sword in life that's going to be able to take care of all situations, and that is the word of the living God. And if we will ground ourselves with our faith in Jesus Christ through the word of the living God, we can take that right there and we can battle against principalities and powers. A lot of these tools can be used to defend ourselves against mankind, but this is the most important tool that we have as Christians. And I encourage you, if you're not in it daily, you need to be in this word daily and let it transform your life. Let it change you from the inside out. It's what's changed my life and what continues to change my life. And I love the fact that it keeps me from having a tremendous amount of fear. I have concern at times, but I don't really have a tremendous amount of fear as a Christian and a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, another thing on common sense, one of these days, hopefully, what if it's by Easter that we get to come back together? Wouldn't that be a glorious time of resurrection and renewal if God allows us to come back together as a church and this, this pandemic is eased and we can worship together as brothers and sisters in Christ again. We all look forward to that. But we'll also use common sense. This is not a time to greet each other with a holy kiss. Michael came in today, this morning, and we didn't touch each other. Amen. We didn't fist bump. We didn't get close to each other. We maintained distance because we want to use wisdom as well. We're not going to kiss each other normally anyway, but the Bible talks about greeting each other with a holy kiss. So I ask, can you find peace in troubled times. I know some folks in the world, they'll turn to alcohol, they'll turn to drugs, they'll turn to human relationships, to sex, anything they can to escape out there to try to find that temporary relief. Some folks, I know you couldn't see this earlier and I, I didn't point out to it, but the money. Money is something that put, people put their faith into. And if you saw how the stock market went phew over the last few weeks, so rapidly, and if you've got retirement and if you've got money in that market or if you've got money and other investments, you can see how unstable that can be. So yes, money answers all things, but we don't need to be worshiping money. We don't need to put that above God. We need to use it as the tool that it is. So is he your refuge? Are you in the shelter of the Most High? Are you resting in that place of safety? Do you trust him? And if we do, he protects us. Your second question or point today is, is he your refuge, your place of safety, your God, and have you trusted in him today? I challenge you, while you're off, while you got this break, while you have this time, while you're bored at home, get into your Bibles. Get into the book of Red Revelation. I challenge you, I was reading that before I came in here today, and I, I just ask you, look at the book of Revelation. Number one, it tells you it will bless you for reading it. Number two, you're going to see a lot of things about the end times. Now, don't say Pastor David saying this is the end times. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not prophesying anything like that, but I do know that it's, it's a turbulent time, and the turbulent times that are going to come, the Bible tells us about, are going to make this look like just a hike in the park, like nothing, like a nap or something. It's going to, it's going to be devastating when the enemy comes in the form of the Antichrist and he tries to take over this old world before Jesus finally comes back and establishes his kingdom. So understand, we can have peace in these times, whether they're the end times, as far as we're concerned it is. I'm 49, I don't know how many more years God will give me in this earth suit, but I wanna serve him all the time that I have left. But life is a vapor. We see so many people passing even before their time we don't think that they should be gone yet, but they are, and it's something that we all face. But if we have our salvation, if we know who we are in Jesus Christ, if we've trusted in him, 
We can have that confidence. We can have that protection that whether we do face an illness in this life and we're not healed on this side of eternity, we'll go from life to life with that eternal life. And the hope of eternal life gives us that tremendous peace that no matter what we face, whether it's COVID-19 in this world or whether it's a natural death that we know to be absent from the body is to be present with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's more than just praying a prayer. It's more than just making an emotional decision. It's a lifestyle change. It's how we live out what he created us to do, how we're obedient and we follow him as we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Your third point today is verse 3. He brings us to this point. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Your third point is Jesus will rescue you and protect you in these earth suits. I believe that. I believe that God has kept me alive through many times in my past when I was in law enforcement and had to carry weapons like this on a frequent basis. And he kept me from being seriously injured. He kept me from being murdered. He kept me here to be able to fulfill what he created me to do. I was okay as a police officer. I walked in that for a season of time. But now I feel like God has got me doing what he created me to do, what I was called to do. We need rescue. We need protection many times in life. Do you ever pray for protection? I'm a road biker in East Tennessee. I'm a motorcycle rider in East Tennessee. I pray frequently for protection as I go out of my driveway, as I'm riding around these, these mountain roads and these hillsides and these curves and with all the traffic and all the tourists and all the potential injury out there. I pray and I ask God, protect me, God. I whisper those prayers frequently, especially when they're whizzing by me a little too close, a little too closely. Maybe, maybe you pray as you drive in East Tennessee, amen? Maybe in Sevierville, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge in June, July, and August. Can I, can I get a witness, amen? We need to be praying as the tourists take three lanes across to get to the comedy barn or any other place. You know, when they, all they got to do is drive down and change lanes carefully and get to the next crossover. They can come back. But a lot of times I've seen it, they just whip across those three lanes of traffic. That'll, that'll increase your prayer life, amen? That will help you to grow as a follower of Jesus Christ when they do that to you. But like I say, we put a lot of things here just to illustrate what people do put their faith in, what they try to put their trust in. And some things are practical. We got to have them. I understand that. But we need to be putting our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One very important thing about this too today is we need to have this in our hearts and our minds. And I know it can be a challenge. If you've never read the Bible, you may be intimidated by it. But I challenge you, get into Genesis. Don't read just Revelation. Start in the front, go all the way through, and never stop. Because right now, you could take me, if they kicked the door in, God forbid, and said, what you're doing is illegal. You can't preach the word of God anymore. And they took my Bible away from me, and they took me to the jail, and they locked me up, and they put me in there with nothing whatsoever in that jail cell. I can still worship God through what I have in my mind, what I have in my heart. No one can ever take that away from me. No one can take that away from you if we will do that. And we, we disciple ourselves. We have discipline and we become disciples of Jesus Christ, reading the love letter, hiding it in our minds and our hearts. Let it change our minds, our hearts, and our actions. Then no one can ever take that away from you. Those weapons can be taken away from us. These supplies can be stolen and taken away from us. Our money can evaporate so quickly. But the word of the living God, no one can take that away from you if you hide that in your heart and hide that in your mind. I challenge you to do that. If you want the peace that passes all understanding in the spot of what may going on in this old world around us. Can you say the same thing today? If everything was stripped away from you, if you were thrown into prison, if you had no Bible, you had no phone, you had no access to electronics. Have you hidden it in your heart? It's important, Christian, vital, vital for our faith. When we choose faith over fear, we can do what the next few verses tell us in Psalm 91, verses 5 through 8. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils 
will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. And that brings us to our fourth point today. Christians, stand on the promises of Scripture. I pray that prayer. You know, I, I may be a breath prayer, a whisper prayer as I'm pedaling down the street or I'm riding my motorcycle. I may say, God, thank you that a thousand may fall at this hand and ten thousand at the other hand, but this harm will not come near me. Stand on the promises of the Word of God. Pray Psalm 91. Pray the Word of God. Don't just, you know, it's good to cry out to God. I'm not saying that. But if we pray the Scripture, that is the Word of God. He cannot lie. He cannot go against His Word. So when you pray that Scripture over your life, you pray Psalm 91 over your family, over your friends. Just like we prayed over little Ella Swafford back in December of 2017. This was such a special moment in our church. And you can go online. You can see it on our Facebook page. It's got almost 10,000 views. It's our featured video, I believe, on our Facebook page. And you can see their testimony of Hutch and Amanda, and you can see how we came and we filled this altar here at Severeville First, and we prayed for little Ella Swafford, and God just led me to Psalm 91 to pray over her, that no disease was going to take her, that she would live and she would not die. And thank God, praise God, he healed her. He touched her in a miraculous way, and she is still here with us today. There is power in praying the word of the living God. Pray it in faith. Read it in faith. Understand it's more than just stories. It is truth out of the Word of God. Verse 7 is that, that, that frequent prayer like I'm talking about. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. So no matter what's on CNN or Fox News or NBC or ABC or whatever you watch that maybe has you up in an uproar, turn that off and go to Psalm 91 and understand the peace that we can all have as followers of Jesus Christ in the midst of a pandemic, in a dangerous situation. You know what's interesting? I thought about this as I studied for the sermon this week. The author of Psalm 91, in spite of their faith, in spite of these wonderful words that they kept for us, it was preserved for us and our generation, that author still died. And you know what? So were you. So will I. We have that appointment one day, whether it's a disease, whether we live to be very, very old, and we, we, we die full of years. One way or another, we have that appointment. It's appointed once for man to die, and then the judgment, the Bible tells us. So that's a place that we will go. One day, if Jesus tarries his return, but we've got to live in faith until we arrive in his presence on that glorious day. Either way, Christian, we will win. We'll be healed. We'll be whole. We'll be better off. We will have the victory in Jesus. His promises can continue here in Psalm 91, 9 through 13. Follow with me if you've got your Bibles. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you don't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. I love that part of the scripture as well. But you know what? Those promises are conditional. And that's your fifth point today, a very important point. These promises in Psalm 91 are conditional upon our response. Our God is a good, good father. Our God did not bring this sickness upon us. I don't know if anybody's preaching that, that this is judgment from God. I don't believe that. I believe we live in a fallen world. It happened when Adam and Eve started what they did in the Garden of Eden. They ate the fruit that was forbidden. So sin, death entered the world. The wages of sin equals death. We have a real adversary. We have a real enemy that you will see in the book of Revelation if you go read about Satan. And he's here to kill, to steal, and destroy for a short time. But God, amen, God has a plan. He has a purpose. And if we will make the Lord our refuge, if we will make the most high our shelter, if we will do that, and that takes submission, God won't force himself upon you. He won't make you come in and obey what this Bible tells you to do. He gives you free will. You can choose your path in this life, but I'll tell you what, you're a lot better off to walk under the umbrella of this protection, to do what it tells you to do and not do what it says not to do, than to step out on your own and say, no, God, I'm going to do what I want to do the way I want to do it. Good luck with that. That is not a good policy. That is not something that I encourage you to do. I've done that in my life. I have run from God, amen, and I've been the prodigal son 
And things did not always turn out well for me, although but God, he brought me back. He guided me back. I was disciplined and came on back. And I, I, I listened to his spirit, and I listened to the word, and the word transformed me and continues to do that today. So obedience matters. I've preached that. I will continue to preach that. If God gives me another 40 or 50 years of preaching on this planet, I will preach that obedience to this word matters for Christians. Recently, I visited a dear friend from our church. Uh, they attend frequently when they're able. And we discussed issues that were going on in their life. And they had several concerns. Uh, this person is overall tremendously blessed, very blessed. Uh, and I tried to cover certain points. I listened most of the time. I didn't do a whole lot of talking, but I felt inspired by God to mention these five things. I mentioned physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, and financially for this person's life. And I encouraged them to do the things that were wise, that were biblical in those areas. Like physical bodies, we need to take care of our physical bodies. And even, uh, even those folks that are involved with the medical professions would tell you right now, if you're physically fit, if you're very healthy, this disease has a harder time attacking your lungs and taking you out of this life. So if we do what we need to do, if we exercise, if we try to eat better, if we try to do the things that are helping us, like getting more sleep, I try to go to bed earlier at night than I used to so that I'm well rested when I wake up and I have the energy and the ability to do what God has called me and created me to do. So physically, I would encourage you to do that. Spiritually and emotionally, be in the Word of God daily. Depression is going to attack. The enemy is going to lie to you. He's going to tell you things that are not true about you. Or they may have been true in the past, but God said, no, no, Satan, that's paid for. But God, I've taken care of that on the cross of Calvary. So emotionally and spiritually, this word of God is so important, so vital. I will always point you to that. That's going to be so useful to fight back against fear, to fight back against the enemy. You're one with Jesus Christ, but you've got to understand that revelation of who you are through this Bible. And then we need to live like Jesus. We need to treat others as we should treat them and we should do what he tells us to do in his word. Financially, we need to be generous, folks. If you want to receive, you need to be giving. And I don't say give to get, but give because it's the best thing to do. It's the fun thing to do. I was, I was sitting there earlier this week and I thought, I need to write a tithe check for something else that happened in my life, not from payday. I get paid next week. I'll write another one. But I brought it to church with me today, and I'm going to turn this in. And thank you so much for everyone who continues to do that. This is such a generous church. Even though we've not been here to worship corporately in two weeks, you guys are bringing in your tithes. You're giving online. There's two different ways now to give on our website at Severeville First. And you can do that. Go in there and give even when you're not here. Even when you're disconnected physically, you can still be connected to your church through worship in this manner and also through giving. And I've never regretted a gift to the church. I've never regretted being obedient to the tithe and bringing that back in because God is a God of abundance. He's never going to let you go without when you obey the principles of seed, time, and harvest in this word. Amen. So thank you. Please continue. There are ways. We're here Monday through Thursday until this thing is over and we'll be able to take your tithe check. You can mail them to 214 Cedar Street. Go to our webpage, however you want to do that. But please don't, don't miss out on that blessing because God blesses us for that obedience as well. But we also need to love relationally. Relationships with others can be difficult at times. Many folks are sort of cramped in together, staying at home with family units right now, and there may not be a lot of love at times when tempers, tempers sort of get heated. But we need to still love. We need to be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. We need to help people. Maybe go see a neighbor and share some of your beans. If you've got an 85-pound can of beans, amen, maybe you can put those in Tupperware things and take it to an elderly neighbor or somebody that's afraid to get out because of this virus. Maybe you can share some of your 25 cases of water. Some of your 144 rolls of toilet paper there, you can, you can share that, give that to a neighbor. Maybe you've got extra bleach, whatever, whatever you can do to still be the church. We can be the church even though we're not here in the building. The building is not the church. I'm preaching in an empty building today. You're the church. I'm the church. Let's remember that. Let's be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, and let's love in spite of all that's going on. And our last verses today is Psalm 91, 14 through 16, and let's, let's close this out. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. 
I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Those are promises. There's promises in the word of God. I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, do you call on God? I try to call on God daily, multiple times a day. I get up early to pray, to call upon his name, to try to hear from him, to try to focus on what he wants me to do with my life, on what he wants me to preach. And I pray this message has been encouraging and uplifting to you. And that's what he's laid upon my heart to share with you. If I don't spend my time with him, I'm not going to have anything to give out. And that's how it is with you at home, with whatever you're doing, with your children, with your grandchildren, with your coworkers, with friends and family. You've got nothing to give them unless you have the word of God to give them. And your last point, your final point today is number six. Christian, we serve a God who wants us to call upon him, and he promises to answer. Amen. That is good news. The God of the universe wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from me. He wants us to have that interaction, that personal relationship. And prayer works, y'all. Pray against this COVID-19 virus daily. Help us. Join with us. Pray against it. Curse it in Jesus' name. Easter is coming. Resurrection Sunday is coming. Amen. We call it Easter traditionally. I understand that's a pagan name. It's Resurrection Sunday. Jesus comes out of the grave. We're celebrating that time. Wouldn't that be a wonderful time? for God to just allow this thing to be flattened out. If we pray and we call upon him, he'll heal our land. The Bible tells us that. Let's do that. And let's believe. Yeah, it's quick. Yeah, it's fast. But he's God. He's bigger than we are. He's bigger than we can imagine. He can do this if we join together in unity and we pray against this evil disease. So I encourage you to do that. If you understand the principles of Psalm 91, if you obey this, if you do this, you can have the peace that passes all understanding today. You can leave that fear behind and you can choose faith because it's going to be greater than fear. I'm going to ask every head to be bowed, every eye to be closed. I know you're at home, you're watching this online, but guess what? God is there. He is with you. There may not be two or more gathered together, but the Holy Spirit is there. If you're a child of his, he's inside of your heart. If you're not, he may be knocking on the door of your heart today, no matter when you're watching this. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you today, Christian? Is it a time to finally stop walking in fear and exchange it for faith? Are you willing to work in obedience? Maybe you know there's some things in your life that don't line up with Scripture. Are you willing to surrender that to God? Are you willing to say, okay, Jesus, I'm going to to leave that behind. I need your help. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's difficult to leave a relationship you shouldn't be in, to put down a substance you shouldn't be messing with, to quit doing something at work maybe that's not so ethical, maybe to treat an employee in a better fashion. Maybe it's to love others. Maybe it's to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Maybe you've not been doing that. Maybe you've been hoarding a little bit. You've got too many beans. You've got too many bullets. You've got too many things that maybe... God has impressed upon your heart during this sermon that, hey, I I do have that person up the street. They could use a little help. They could use some toilet paper. I've got to learn to trust God in every circumstance. Maybe you need to spend time with him daily to read, to obey this Bible, this love letter that was written to us. It's our instruction manual. If we'll obey it, if if we'll do what it says, we'll be blessed. Maybe today it's salvation. Maybe you've, you've just tuned in because you're so upset about what's going on in the world. You've, you're not a church-going person. You've not made a decision for Jesus Christ. And I can't save you. Your family members can't save you. The Holy Spirit has to come and convict your heart. And you have to say, okay, I accept you, Jesus. You have to pray a prayer. Pray a prayer like this. Say, Father God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I'm going to believe that Jesus is Lord, and I confess with my mouth that, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. It's a simple little prayer, and then you just say, God, Jesus, come into my heart, and I'm going to follow you all the days of my life. And when you do that, then you've got to make a decision, make it a public profession of faith, and you've got to follow 
Like I said earlier, you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. None of us have arrived yet from the pastors all the way down to whoever the largest sinner is in your town. We have to walk it out. We have to learn obedience. We have to change our mind, our hearts, and our actions. So that being said today, let me pray for you. I think we're going to put the music back up at the end of this sermon. If you want to just sit and you want to soak in that worship, understand he's a good, good father. And he has plans to bless you. He has plans for you to take care of you in every situation. Join me as we pray. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity, God, to share with your people. God, I pray that none of your word would fail to impact people's lives right where it needs to impact them, God. That we would find your peace, that we would find faith in Psalm 91 and God in every other chapter of the Bible as well. God, I pray that we would understand that we are the church. We can still be your hands and your feet even though we're not meeting and assembling in this building each week. God, I curse this coronavirus in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would destroy it, that you would curse it, that you would give innovation, that you would give treatments, that you would give us a vaccine. God, that you would help us to overcome this so that we could be back together and released to freely worship you. Resurrection morning. Go before us, make our paths clear, make it straight. I pray a special blessing upon each and every person that watches this video and worships with us online that you bless them physically, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for that blessing and for all you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I love you, Sevierville First. I look forward to seeing you soon. Call me if you need me. We're here. God bless. I love your voice. You will lead me through the fire and in darkest night. You were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God yeah. And all my life you have been faithful Of the goodness of God I'm gonna say